Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me at the start of a new video or even campaign in Hearts of Iron 4, the new order, a new Millennium Demo, apparently version Hotfix 2.0 or whatever it is, so um, I almost never do this anymore showing you the very beginning, but this is the beginning, it's January 1st, the year 2000, and at the time it's recording, only um, Germany is playable apparently, but let's get right into it, apparently there's like no audio yet, weird, I don't know, but even from those from this map, it's supposed to be the year 2000. We have the autonomous Burgund, French state, Italian, Social Republic, Croatia, Hungary, uh, certain Poland, uh, Reichsland, Ukraine, Reichsland, Vice Uthinian, and the USSR is still on the right side. What happened to Turkey? Turkish Liberation Front, Turkish government forces, as well as holy leadership of Turkey. Eh? So, there's been some funky stuff. I don't know exactly the lore behind this mod or this demo, but I'm interested in anything TNO pretty much. Well, almost anything TNO related. So, oh, we won the game! We're gonna continue. Okay, so I don't even know what, this, what we're gonna, what happens here. So, if you wanna read about this, please go right ahead. Wow, this, uh, also I've played with the peace conferences and station tool mod on, but, you know, whatever it is, what it is for that. Uh, so if you wanna read about that, you can always pause <clears throat> to read it. So hopefully we need some good focuses. I kind of doubt we'll go to war with anybody. It doesn't make any sense why we would do that. So, and then there's some more here, and then here. Uh, maneuver the entire entire entirety entity of the N N D N S D A P group. Strengthen and expand and reform the Europa, Europa Pact and lead the Reich into the 21st century, increasing its wealth and secure its interests abroad. This looks like a 1990s Mac computer, but okay, robots. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, I've I've heard that we might not. Oh my goodness, this is definitely a unique sort of looking. Yeah, does this even work? Yeah. Uh, this is eight years ahead of time. It's the year two thousand. So it, it's still a mod. It's still a demo. So there's still stuff that has to get you know finished. So I'm not gonna hold him too too much to like. Oh, it's not done yet. I'm like, oh, let's relax. It, it's still a demo and. Uh, I still want to try it out, so. <clears throat> oh, I can't even read that. Anyways, uh, I'll start with the... Oh, my goodness. Oh, the Reign of the Eagle. The greater German Reich reigns over Europe, a nearly uncontested, a glorious nation has lived through times of turbulence. A civil war, the near collapse of the Reich's commissariat, the oil crisis, and the Burgundian refugee crisis. The immortal ideology of the pure... <clears throat> Aryan man lives into the next century and millennium. Under the leadership of Albert Speer, we truly rose up to the great heights, and the German Eagle reigns, watching over its subjects firmly and kindly. Has no effect. Okay, well, that's great. Um, three military factories. Oh, we have to set this all up, don't we? Oh, goodness. Oh, APCs. I like APCs. Guns. You know what? Let's let tanks slowly go on. I, I, I don't think we'll get into war, but you never know. Is this artillery? Basic artillery. Uh, basic anti-air, sure. Why not? Transport planes. We'll probably need a couple of those guys. Um, uh, improved. Yeah, we just got that, which is nice. Tank eyes. Oh, still have the mouse, flak mouse. Probably not going to use that. Or the mouse, the tiger. Basic heavy SP artillery. I like those. Main battle tanks. Yes, please. IFVs. We might have to use those. Heavy SP AA. Whatever. And then some, of course, some planes. I, we can build those things up, but whatever. Basic jet fighters. Uh, jet carrier fighters. Jet cast and CV cast. Jet transfer planes. We might need those. Honestly, interceptors. Ooh, tech helis. I like those. And experimental helicopters, scout helicopters, no thanks. Jet strategic bombers would probably be very useful. And jet tactical bombers, sure, we can make some of those too. So that's all we have. Oh, let's scroll so slowly going up. And anti tank, there goes. Uh, get enough guns, get enough APCs. Get, uh, motorized should be good. Uh, 3, 5, go 20, go 3, go 5. Uh, go 4, 5. And then like 3, and 1 is on. One is good enough for that one. Three, and then like five there. That'll be good enough. Okay, so dockyards, I don't even know. I kind of doubt we'll even use this very much, so there you go. And I have th been told by some people that it is a little hard to read this. And I'm not going to disagree with you there. It's, it is a little hard to read. Battleships, sure. We like them big. But not big, we don't like them. Wow. This is unique. We're... We're processing. All right. Well, I got 40 divisions there. Switch in half. I'm not even gonna. I can. It's really hard to read this. Uh, Kiesling, Kiesling, Klaus Reinhardt. Sure. Why not? Let's. Sure. Why not? Cavalry. Yes. Yes. I don't know where to send you guys against Italians. I guess. Who likes the Italians in this timeline? Not us. Klaus doesn't even have a portrait. Whatever. It's fine. Reign of the Eagle. 
But let's go with a satisfied people, a harmonious people, a party, into the digital age. Ooh, yes. Europe United. A uh, new Wirtschaftswunder introduced the euro mark. Into the digital age. Computers are a new frontier and also a new test or threat. The Weltnetz, a cutting edge method of communication created simultaneously in the United States and Germany in different forms, has become un common staples in many households. Terminals are used by investors. Computers are used by schools for many different purposes, such as testing and connecting with other schools and by businessmen to learn new methods, but there are others who use it. Chat rooms full are full of Bolsheviks and liberals who spread their insidious lies inside our Reich. American agents speed or spread propaganda about freedom and democracy or good Aryan people who do not need, any, need these lies. Our children are being subverted. We must be vigilant yet also innovative, creative, and yet rever reserved. Go low, go high. Why do we have some Raffel dude here? Is that Carl? Hmm. Train a couple of those guys, motorized divisions. We'll train one of you guys as well. C battalions, KSK operatives, Panzer divisions. Sure, why not? There you go. <clears throat> Alright, so what do we have? Oh my goodness. NSDAP, of course. We have a. Not even a triangle. We have. What the heck? Leanings. Oh, this is so hard to read. Um, mm hmm. Death of the Hitler, of course. Emerging from the ashes, Albert Speer Sr. rebuilt the party under him and overcame both reactionary and liberal attempts at seizing power f to create the new German National Socialism. <clears throat> Howard's not very united. Uh, Fuhrer Albert Friedrich Speer has been stripped of most of his power, putting the chief of the party chancellor, Martin Moog, Musnug, in a position of de facto government leader. Uh, Schroeder seeks to imitate the regimes of the West, loosening the government's iron grip and bringing the promises of reform. Exact obstacles pursued by Gunther Deckert's clique. One return to Orthodox National Socialism. All right. And a rejection of Spearite reforms, intimidating Hitler's vision of ideology. In between stands Martin Musnig, keeping both the radical factions and the Big Daddy at bay, maintaining the Spearite course for National Socialism to prevail in the 21st century. What is this one? Alright, well, we can select a lot of stuff. Oh. Oh, party leaning changes. Oh, crap. Deca clique. Oh, it becomes more reformist, more conservative, more influential. Oh, the Coalition de Nation. Nothing. Oh, it's. Oh. Huh. Okay. Well, all right. We'll close out of that one for now. Um, what do we have over here? Oh, look at this. Europa Pact combined. Why is it divided like this? I don't understand. What does this mean? Investment, strength and ties. Oh. Euro pact relations. Economic relations, huh? Well, how about with you? Is there any penalty to doing this? I don't see any penalty. I just click button. There's nothing here. Oh! Oh, whoops, expand pack more unity. Okay, well, whatever. Oh, you can't even close. What? Oh my god, you can't even close out of this? There you go. So we have fascism, authoritarian democracy. All led by Albert Sch both of Albert Speer, unbekannt, unbekannt, unbekannt. Um, Europa, Europe United? Europe as a con continent stands nearly united behind a Reich. Our allies from Ireland and Finland are members of the Euro Pact. And these nations, German goods stand on shelves from German magazines translated into Gaelic, French, and Danish, among other languages, to German foods like Bavarian sausages or deserts, or desserts like strudel. Investors from across Europe invest in the Munich stock market by stocks for companies like BMW and Energy Farben and the nations themselves, people call Germany and Germans their friends and allies. Europe truly is united behind us, loyal to the great project of Albert Speer and the National Socialist German Workers' Party. Crossing the border. It had been about eight years since Kutta had been to Poland. His sister, which he had lost touch with, had died. And as he drove home from her funeral in some nameless village near Warsaw, I remember how much everything had changed back then. He worked for a travel agency and spent his time in hotels and beaches instead of withering away in retirement. His children were more present, his wife was happier, his brother was not the hopeless alcoholic he had become now. Maybe he viewed the past ruins than it was. His family had not developed for the worse. He'd become a grandfather and sure he did organize trips to Crimea, Mauritius, and America, but for the most of his life he was trapped in his office. 
Poland had changed too back then. In 1992, taking the direction of Warsaw led to a desolate road into a lonely border checkpoint. There was almost no traffic, and no German would have traveled to Poland for tourism, if ever, for economic purposes. Now the sign did not point to Warsaw, but to Wazaza, and there were no border checkpoints. Immediately, the more numerous drivers were instead greeted by Europact and Reichsland flags. Germany was notably, notably absent, but strangely, the Polish were much more talkative than eight years ago and seemed much more positive towards him. The older Poles did not speak about Germany or politics, but the younger ones seemed eager too. The Burgundy War seemed to be a major topic, and the atmosphere lined up with jokes about the ones feared Oldenstadt. Kurt was not political, but it felt good to share a few statements everyone agreed on. The idiocy of Himmler, the menace of the Soviets, and the benefits of the pact, and the efficiency of the government. Although they spoke fluent German, and seemingly very every term, such as Reichsland or NSDAP, was replaced by a Polish equivalent, it seemed as if the new generation did not view the party of the Führer as something German, rather, they viewed it as Polish. Time flies so fast. And this looks like the old way of how they used to uh, develop give you societal developments. That's interesting. After that one, uh, the Baganda. It was a dark winter evening in Stuttgart <clears throat> and Katarina. A schoolgirl, which was just barely a child anymore, wandered through the parks of the city on her way home. Although snow was strangely absent this year, the war was harsh and cold. As she wandered along the familiar hedges of the park, she heard a quiet sound coming from behind one of them. Curious, she peeked through the dense leaves. The sight was unexpected. Well, you can't even read the screen stuff up here, can you? Uh, behind the trees and bushes were more than a dozen people, sleeping wrapped in blankets. In the middle was a burnt-out fireplace, and bags filled with textile sheds or shreds, rotten food and other junk surrounding them. Katarina had heard of these people, the Burgunder, but she'd never seen them in person. They had fled from the war in the West, from the cruelty of the SS. In school, she had learned how horrible the SS were and how she felt pity. She was about to turn around from the sad side and continue her way back home, but suddenly, a figure entered the small campsite. So abnormal were these features of the man that she could barely suppress a scream, his absurdly thin figure, his wide erratically moving eyes, in his scale pinned and damaged everywhere, almost burnt. With him he brought a bag, and immediately after his arrival the others awoke and rushed towards him. Now she could see that they too looked sickly and meager like him. Some were barely older than her, others around her age or her parents, but none older than fifty, although they all looked as if they had aged twice as fast. Eagerly they gave him cash and somewhat valuable objects, which he exchanged for pills and small plastic packages filled with white powder. Katarina had an uncomfortable feeling. She knew that the Boganda had been forced to take medications by Himmler and his SS to make them work longer, and she remembered how very well her parents sold her too, under no circumstances, take anything a Boganda offers. As soon as she or they received their prices, they swallowed and snorted them. One after another, they changed. Their lethargic behavior turned off, and they started to run, clap, and jump as if they were suddenly charged with energy. While most of them seemed to take longer and remained in their place, others were acting outright bizarre, starting fights, speaking disordered and mangled, and appeared to be hallucinating. It was too much for Katarina. As much as she felt pity, she now only felt disgust. Quickly, she rushed home, and not to worry her parents kept quiet about her encounter. The shadows of the Odenstadt live on. <clears throat> Unlimited power. The German Wehrmacht is said to be unbeatable. Years of sharpening, like an assassin's knife, have turned its soldiers from the lazy sloths of the late 50s to the killing machines. The war in Russia was a bloody one, but you could be absolutely sure that for every German that was killed, ten Russians went down with them. The military has developed everything from spy planes to extra-large tanks, and this quality has been extended to our allies as well. Oh, an operative. Emma Hoffner. I like women. On occasion. Anyways, Russian Soviet Federal Socialist Republics. Who is actually leading this? Some guy. Oh, I don't think I can even read that. But if you'd, like, if you'd like to attempt to read that, please let me know. And please do so. What is this? Command power? Uh, I don't even know who all these people are, so... This is still a demo. Things are still very, very much in work. In a state of work and transition, probably. So, I wouldn't be... I'm not really too upset if they're not big, perfect or bond. Huh. You sound a little familiar. Hmm. Bulgaria. Ah, Pavlos. Hey, remove! Oh, yeah, this is a divided turkey. Ooh. Ooh, IDK. <laughs> I love that name. That beer in Union still exists. Jose. Jean Le Pen. Jean Marie Le Pen. He sounds familiar, too. Oh, good Elizabeth. Look how happy she is. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not Dick Cheney. Please. Legacy of Harrington. Oh, that's kind of cool. Plus 15% political power. Hegemony in waiting. Affirmative. Oh, affirmative action, bro. Dot com boom, someone united and led by the Eternal Elizabeth. Another, di another dick in the White House. Nice. Uh, also, I, if I didn't say it already, I'm sure I did. But this is the only nation that we can really play. It only has content, so the Millennium oh, Growth. Nice. The Fracture Party. From the fringe group in Bavaria to the most influential institution in Europe besides the Euro Euro Pact. The NSDAP has become a long way in. Its face has changed more than once. Just a decade prior, the party itself seemed to be obsessed with its own history, its rise of power, and victory and ascension, and the German Civil War. So it's changed, though. History books now seem to begin with the Civil War and Fuhrer Speer Sr., with Hitler being reduced to a little more than a footnote, and one man's blame, Martin Musnug. 
A three-way split runs throughout the party on one side, Gunter Decker, a fervent supporter of the old national socialism, a stricter on uh, stricter on uh, economic controls, early implementation of the Nuremberg laws, oh, it's not much harsh authoritarianism. On the other, opponents of authoritarianism, components of censorship and racial ideology. The reformers, led by Gerhard Schroeder, of course. Somewhere in between lies the majority, led by Martin Mussolini, oriented on new national socialism. The ideas developed by a few about Speer Senior, not Hitler and not liberal ideas, are important to Germany, but Speerite thought. The fear himself seems neutral and inoffensive, not taking stances and preferring to remain in the background. The cause of this is not unwillingness to participate in intrigue, but instead, pressure from the real leader of Germany, the puppet master Mussolini, got firm support of Speer's father's vision for the future of Germany. And the vision for Germany. The current Führer Speer, however, seems to hide sympathies for the reformist cause, much unlike his father, however. Ideas hidden carefully by Musnug and his loyalty. And his loyalists. One people, one nation, one leader. Ooh, poverty would get better. Yeah, I'll do that one. A new Weltschaft's Wunder. The German economy is at the dawn of the new millennium is one in an upswing. Investments have finally picked up with the collapse of the hated and feared black state. The markets of Europe have been repaired and built up to new heights. Men no longer worry about money all across Europe. Wow. All the loss of, even the loss of Moscow has not stopped a growth. Companies have been founded and investments made, and these companies remain stable. Our economy is about to repeat the economic miracle after the Civil War, and the Wirtschaftswunder under Ge uh, the, the Germans now have a record buying power, and the rest of Europe is catching up to the things that have never been better. I don't know, bro, which way we want to go. I lied. I do, actually. What do you put a part for this, too? I don't understand the outer, inner party, and the core party. Expand the admin system. Um, Conservative. Medium conservative. So, uh, it's part of the conservatives, reactions, and reformists. As part of membership, is necessity for most jobs and chances of proving one's social status. It includes a large amount of entire German middle class. Outer party consists of them. They are followed by the inner party consisting of Cicero's or clerks, secretaries, and organizers. The working cogs of the grand machine that is the NSDAP. The party core, the Spieljugend, the very top stands of party leadership with the government itself. <clears throat> I don't know, bro. I don't want to touch this. I don't like that. So, which one is the conservatives? Is the outer party conservatives? Inner party? Is it reactionaries and reformists? I kind of doubt it. I kind of don't like how that's been uh, set up. I'm just going to let whatever happened happen. Introduce the Euromark. The European economy, with its massive connection to Germany, is somewhat encumbered by all the different currencies used in foreign nations. During this situation, economists and politicians have created a new solution the Euromark. The Euromark will be Europe's one currency and will do away with the other currencies of the Euro Pact. With allies sharing a single currency, the Euromark will be a stable, viable union that will help us tie the European economies even closer together. This buying power will inevitably help make the European economy soar even higher. Four days left. Oh, I thought we had it done. What is this? Our current hard power? Oh. Who represents economic and military power? It's calculated through military factors and our GDP. Could always use more GDP, which is not very much. Oh, that's debt. I mean, look at the debt thing yet. What is this? Tri oh, okay, so we do use this new system here. Well, sort of ish. Not really, but sort of ish. Alright, so that's the case. Less on you. Less on you. Less on you. Max those suckers out. So we have. How do we get uh, 1450.57 billion dollars? Israeli recognition of the KDM. The Coalition de Nations and Parliament in Hamburg has yet again decided to vote on the recognition of Israel as full KND, KDM Parliament member. Moving it from observer status. The diplomatic blocs of pro and anti Israeli nations have taken their sides already, however. The biggest supreme su surprise might be whether Germany will finally shift its policy towards the country. The assembly will be heated with tension, this is for sure. Why is this going up? We have such a surplus. German, German capitalism. Recognize Israel as a KDN member? That's so hard to read. Uh, one of the cornerstones of German foreign policy in the Levant since the time of Albert Speer is a lack of recognition of Israel ever since the state declared its independence. In the past, the lack of recognition even rose to the level of aid to Israel's enemies at certain times. This is due to a combination of an ideology that opposes those Zionists and the desire of all allies for Germany and the region. This in turn has led Israel to a certain partnership with the United States as a counterbalance to the German corporations. There have even thought from several party members about a potential success in dismantling Israel through a proxy during these days. All these failed. It seems that Israel is an existing fact that will not be abolished in the near future. In the KDN, however, as a result of the active opposition to the Euro Pact, the lobby of the nations that are against Israel and the failure of the Americans to raise enough votes for Israel have settled to, settled, had to settle for being an observer member. Their voice, a few number, but nonetheless exists, of those who argue that stopping our opposition to giving Israel full membership is the correct way forward. In light of our former diplomatic failure, the most vocal of them is our foreign minister, Gerhard Schroeder. 
They argue that at the very least, they say this move allows greater flexibility and show the world a better Germany, as if, as in that we will not be so openly hostile to Israel, at least ostensibly. However, it's impossible to know how great such a move is and its consequences, whether at the level of relationship between us and our partners in the Levant, or by the feelings by everyday Germans. In addition, Israel's full membership in KDM. As a result of our abolition of opposition does not mean diplomatic relations, because Israel has publicly stated numerous times that it will never forget the fate of European Jews, even if Speer tries to hide or tries to shift all the blame on the issue of Hitler. Never? Become more conservative. Oppose Israel's recognition. Might lead to the Euro Pact members to follow suit. Sure can take care of this. Never. Why would we want them? Need oh my gosh. Who needed to do that? I don't want growth. That's all I care about. That's why I play Tino. That's the only reason why I play Tino, just for growth. I, I, I'm, just probably, I'm thinking I'll like, just go conservative? Endless prosperity? Yes. Albert Speer, seeing his greatest deed to the German people, was possibly the reform of our shattered economy. The old system was inefficient, dominated by large monopolies, and with foreign unpaid labor taking away German jobs and German productivity. After decades of work, Germany's economic powers again equal to America's. It might rise to even greater heights. With free European markets, a stable currency, and with their goods being exported all across the globe, a broad future is ahead. Some may say that our economy is not built on solid pillars, that the prosperity we brought is a charade, and even that living standard of the average German barely increased in the last decades. But we stand above these lies. The national social system, as envisioned by our great architect, has truly triumphed. Absolutely. Actually, what do we have down here? Do anything... All right, nothing we can do about that. Cool. A satisfied people. The German man's life has never been better. His life is no longer encumbered by economic distress or anxiety. His job is stable. His wife is faithful. Let's hope. His children will be well-behaved and educated, and even his pets all well-fed. A man regrettably falls on his luck. The German welfare system, the Sozial Gesetzbuch, helps him back up. Widows and orphans are all well cared for, and drugs and other degenerate society workers are kept out of any people's unfortunate grasp. The Germans live a good life, and he and his family prosper. What should we have to worry about? I'm going to read the next one too. Harmonious Party. Harmonious Party. The National Socialist German Workers' Party is a united and strong one. Uh, since the great purges of the 70s, the Rutgers and Rats no longer plague the party, and the immortal doctrines of Albert Speer live on, rather than being a current leader or the united apparatus of the party. Any disagreements quickly are ironed out, and party members' uh, odds have never been better. Our members follow a single united doctrine, gone to the days of factionalism and petty bickering, the NSDAP will live on in the new millennium. The quiz. The golden age of TV was over, at least in the opinion of Conrad. His daughter left the TV running on one of her favorite channels, which broadcasts nothing but the new American pop songs. These people, modern singers, that they were all the rage nowadays. Eminem and all these fancy names would ruin music and TV alike. Everything sounded so artificial, so rushed, the noise seemed to come from computers rather than actual instruments. In hopes of finding something interesting, he switched through the channels, another random soap opera, an NSDAP official talking about unimportant transportation policies, low budget Hollywood movies, and... A game of Batman, and finally something at least remotely entertaining appeared on the screen. It appeared to be a quiz now show, followed by a simple system, one question, four possible answers, and now, the next one, which German city was the last holdout of Hadrian's SS during the German Civil War? The participant, a young woman, seemed to struggle with the question. She could not decide between Strasbourg and Vienna. Strasbourg, of course, they're right next to Burgundy. How could she forget? Maybe she's not a true national socialist like we are, right? We're spending a lot on the city stuff, aren't we? Holy crap, 236 billion? The GDP is only 10.7 trillion, that's not enough. Growth is only 4.2%. Annual budget is negative 1.51 trillion. Holy goodness. Our yearly surplus though is 14%. Or at least it's a GDP ratio. So that's not terrible, but it could be better. That's satisfied people and eternal stability. Uh, some may fear we live or may jinx ourselves, but to many politicians, Germany has reached the end of instability. While there are issues, Germans rarely protest, let alone riot. The young people seem docile and committed to their studies, while the workers are content. The people would, you, who you would expect to rise have not. Now, many say that all we have to focus is on the outwards towards the degenerate USA or the Bolshevik, Bolshevik Soviet Union. After all, we are completely stable. Nothing can destroy it. A normal evening. Each year on the public holiday of Abba Speer Sr.'s death date, the main event of German TV took place. The Germania Show, a mix of talk show, comedy, and celebrity, celebrity gossip, broadcasting live from the capital, was as popular as it was infamous for low-quality television. <clears throat> and now, ladies and gentlemen, let us switch our cameraman in the Volkshalle to today's biggest party, organized by none other than the Gauleitung administration of Germania itself. With guests from across Europe and beyond this night's list of participants, might be more illustrious than ever before. Somewhat less excitingly, the most mumbled, Reinhard, why is there no connection? Followed by a black camera and awkward silence. 
As the screen reappeared, the host decided to continue on. Well, as it seems, we might have a few technical problems in the Vogue Sala. While we are waiting, let's look at some of the highlights of last year's celebration. Something behind the glass wall revealing the skyline of Germania seemed to have gathered the attention of the online s or onstage celebrities. The overly excited atmosphere began to fade, and the camera zoomed in on the city view. Suddenly, someone from behind the screen view shouted, Turn off the broadcast, there's an emergency. Scraps of Burgundians' attack and national catastrophe were heard as the broadcast finally froze in the last frame and shut down. The final frame would, however, be burned in the minds of all viewers, a pillar of smoke rising from the direction of the Vauxhalla. What's going on over there? And so a new chapter begins in German history. New options will be available in the Focus Tree. KND Council vote sanctions on Sri Lanka. What? The KND Council in Hamburg has gathered to vote on the sanctions of Sri Lanka resolution. We'll observe the uh, debate closely. And chosen to choose our side carefully as a KDN. Uh, permanent Security Council members decide the KDN's actions against the violations of international law, and international law and uphold global peace. Huh. Here with tension, that's for sure. Okay, well, now what? Oh, Germany Flames. Oh, look at this. That's a beautiful thing. I love this one. Catastrophe struck Germany. The very heart of our capital has been attacked. A bombing and terror attack perpetrated by Burgundian terrorists have disrupted the events surrounding the 19th anniversary of Albert Bessinger's death of the Vauxhall, leaving behind thousands of casualties and throwing our nation into crisis. We must ask quickly, do we take control of the situation and bring justice to those who have perpetrated these acts against us before they strike again? We will not rest until each of these criminals has been brought to justice. Today, Germany mourns the innocence lost, and tomorrow our wrath will cleanse our nation and form our Burgundian lands of the filth. Wow, that's so big. It's bigger than Fischerspeer. <clears throat> Call for an emergency meeting. Enact martial law. Um, sure. The re-established order in our streets, we must declare martial laws. We continue trying to take control of this current crisis. With the current paranoia regarding future attacks from the Burgundians, we must stay vigilant and deploy our security assets. From here, we'll be able to distinguish who is a traitor and who is innocent. This might anger many and escalate the growing tensions even further, but it's the only choice we have. The Vauxhall bombing. What if a vile attack on people the assets reveals itself? Never forget the city and sins of Germany. Yesterday, during the annual festivities, the Vauxhall was attacked by <coughs> terrorists. Their targets were not the government, not the military, no. They targeted defenseless civilians, even children. The scale of casualties is in the range of thousands. Such catastrophic event is left a major question. Who would commit such an act of senseless murder? A question we now finally have an answer to. The SS Velvoff. Oh, we do this one first. The SS Wehrwolf is a terrorist organization which has sworn to destroy the German state, implementing the ideas of Himmler and Heydrich, and killing millions of people which they deem impure. They are part of the Gundrum's, Gundrun's Himmler's Burgundian insurgency, a faction which seeks to restore the infamous order state of Burgundy and wages war against the Europak occupation forces. All the terrorists involved in the attack have sworn allegiance to the Wehrwolf, and his symbols have been found among their belongings. The group has been claimed responsibility for the attack. Today is a day of mourning, of anger, but not of capitulation. Across Germany, the SS Wehrwolf is being actively hunted down. The Wehrmacht has launched a large attack on Schutzstaffel and Sturgeons of Burgundy, and soon the culprits of the treacherous attacks will have to pay. The fight against the SS criminals goes on. Justice will be delivered. Oh. A nation stands together in these troubled times. Unity will defeat terrorism. The daily political power game goes way down. Even though those barbaric of attacks cannot bring Germany down, we will prevail. The effects of the... Huh. The Puppet Fuhrer. We want less panic level, terrorist attack level. Um, that sounds good. Have terrorist activity decrease and panic level decrease as well. Aftermath. I don't know. Pact Fahrung. All right. Well, I guess we got a call for emergency meeting. <clears throat> With the process and uncertainty regarding the Burgundian Wehrwolfs, the government will hold an emergency session with the governmental and security ministers to take stock of our current situation and decide our best course of action going forward before the situation worsens. Schroeder, Decker, Speer, Musnick, and the leading party officials shall meet and discuss further action. They might have many differences, but seeing each of these, uh, <clears throat> the despise these vile terrorists as much as all of Germany, a meaningful and effective plan will be created. Vote on nuclear dearmament efforts. Okay. The emergency meeting. It really seems as if the events of the last days were not shocking enough already, according to our investigators. Certain figures in the Orpo and then the party bureaucracy with ties to the hardliners. Hitlerite dissident wing have purposely prevented the arrest of some of the SS Wehrwolf terrorists in the days leading up to the Vauxhall attack. Furthermore, information indicates that Deckard himself is aware of this, and even encouraged these actions. Outrage at the Hitlerites is growing within the population out now. The question remains on whether or not to reveal his involvement. It would certainly deal massive damage to the working influence of the radical wing within the party, but also bears the risk of presenting our regime itself as incompetent. Nevertheless, the scandal will deal heavy damage to our efforts of keeping the situation stable. The damage is already put down when we cannot discredit certain party members. Deckert is a terrorist sympathizer. Reveals involvement, but he must be taught a lesson. 
I don't want to go Hitlerite. I kind of want to just go conservative. Not necessarily reformist, but I don't, I don't go more conservative. Because right now, we're new National Socialists. Because this guy's a National Socialist. These are the Hitlerites. That's reformist. <clears throat> Let's go more conservative. Sounds from Burgundy. The city of Luxembourg was located almost next to the Burgundian border. Actually, who's over here? Nobody. Uh, ever since the Civil War, the people of Luxembourg had to live with the shadow of the Odenstadt looming over them. Over the years, a feeling began to settle. Somewhere in the West, the world simply ended. A line of military garrisons and electric fences, and behind only dense, endless forests. The Nazi apocalyptic war machinery or hopeless forges of death, bringing weapons, only trees, and on occasions. As S patrols looking for escapees, and in particular the grim incident, the Burgundians mocked the border guards. By hanging up the corpse of a presumed German spy in a flagpole, but in general there were little signs of life from the other side of the border. Luxembourg experienced his own developments, unbothered by the nightmare shrum so close to them, while the city modernized, grew larger and brighter. The grim no man's land remained, more of a reminder of the world's dark side than an actual threat. In the wake of the Burgundian invasion, things changed. The roads leading to nowhere were now carried Euro Pak soldiers in one direction, and soon countless refugees in the other. A few times, explosions, gunshots, and jets flying overhead could be heard, but apart from distant noises, the heck of Burgundy, and the war did not touch the German heartland. Refugees began to settle in Luxembourg, and what was once the end of the world was now merely a gateway to a dangerous, desolate region of Europe. Again, however, with the Burgundian insurgency growing increasingly more active since the Volkswagen bombing, the situation has reverted to the past. Once more, Burgundians flee eastward, more and more tanks and soldiers move westward, and in the skies, bombers, and even now unmanned drones pick their targets in the wasteland. The faint light of Burgundy go out again, one by one, and the population of the ever-growing, booming cities of Luxembourg, Strasbourg, and others can only watch as the nightmares of the past reappear so close to them. This cannot mean anything good. Deal with the protests. Hunt the veil buffs. Uh, I like this one. Hunt them. I sent them. With the immediate aftermath of the Volksala bombing, we must find and stop nothing at finding the ringleaders of the Burgundian Veblofs and who ordered and planned out these dastardly attacks against the great nation. We'll deploy any usable resources necessary, whether police, military, or intelligence, and hunting them down and neutralizing them before they strike us again. Interrogation. The prison, the Strafanstadt Königs Wusterhausen, at the border of Germany, is not exactly a place with good reputation. The maximum security prison is infamous for keeping the most dangerous prisoners of the entire Europe packed. An uncomfortable cold place, but it also harbors something, a key that might give Germany answers, information on the crisis that has struck it. This key comes in the shape of a pale, slender university student, Dennis Semelrog. Although he prefers to refer to himself as Siegfried Eicke, a name his comrades of the SS Vevel are familiar with. His body is filled with wounds, some inflicted by bullets in the Volkshalle attack, some by vengeful policemen, and some by <laughs> himself. Not many would have expected. Expected Führer Speer and the Reich's Minister of the Interior, Gunt Gutta Deckert, to enter Königs Busterhausen's prison, and few would have expected them to go to do so together. Deckert, the radical admirer of Hitler, preacher against a modern society, and Speer, the moderate advocate for stability and the status quo under his father, opposition like Deckert would have left the country or been arrested long ago, but the title had lost its power. It was an open secret in the party that Speer Jr. advocated for a level of societal change many would view as an outright insult to the new NSDAP ideals. But as always, Musnick found a way around his orders, and that in fact were not much more than requests. Decker was even more controversial. The two men entered the interrogation room and were greeted with a Heil Speer, Heil Germania, an officer, then as silently but horrible, or audibly, uh, whispered Heil Himmler, then proceeded to giggle. Ha! Huh. He is the sole living captured participator of the attack. I hope none of you brought anything else to your clothes with you because the other two committed suicide as soon as they saw anything representing a knife. The officer made a grim smile. He was not responsible for them, but he felt great shame. Thanks to the several substances, we've managed to increase his talkability a bit. So we've only extracted few information from within him. I wanted to see the Fuhrer and the Minister Inspector investigation in person. First of all, these, these guys were like Robocop. Question about the leader of the SS Veva. The equipment funding. Soft power. A reputation within the inter international community modified the various de decisions we make. All right. The reignition of the Burgundian War. Uh, they seem to come from nowhere at all. As if they simply materialized themselves out of nothing, they stormed the isolated settlements of Burgundy, seizing the countryside and forcing the Wehrmacht to retreat, or the Wehrmacht garrisons to retreat. Announced but not unexpected. Although the Euro Pact have prepared for a resurgence of uh, the SS activity, they have barely managed to put up resistance against an offensive of such immense in size and speed. <clears throat> in the four smashes and wastelands, SS troops prepared regular ambushes on the Euro Pact troops. The slums of Hafenstadt and Brussels became hotbeds of unrest and terrorism in the last weeks. Not a day had passed without bombings and assassination attempts on military officials. This was no longer the same war as the initial 1996 invasion. It was not a fight against a decaying, collapsing Ordenstadt plan for years and executed in a swift strike instead. The Euro Pact fought a ghost like invisible force which seemed to be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. United by the leadership of Gudrun Himmler, daughter of the 
Reichsfeer SS himself, the Schutzstaffel, had healed its wounds and reorganized itself. Most of the pre-invasion SS had been completely destroyed. Instead of a spot in elite, Gudrun Himmler's army forces every Burgundian fit for service, and those that aren't as well into the SS transforming them into zealots which make up for their lacking training and equipment with their sheer numbers and fanaticism. With their foes, tactics being well beyond conventional warfare, paranoia has grown among Europak forces, with a line between combatants and civilians, friendly and enemy territory burrowing. No place in Burgundy is truly safe, and the menace of the SS is growing stronger by the day. In the dusk, the black sun rises. We can send one division to Burgundy. One? Oh. What? Did Himmler actually have a kid? I don't. I know Goebbels had a lot of kids. Move to one. Oh, uh, who do we send? I don't even do any of this stuff yet. Um. Okay, you don't even exist. It looks like. Would uh, sending arm? Okay, what the heck. Um. I don't know if armor is the way to do it here. Here, get out of there. You're gonna suffer too much attrition. Well then. I'm going to assume ascending armor is going to be okay. How good are you? Well, we'll see, I guess. These guys aren't very good. Runa, so be it. I can't even read this attack, Hellies. 36. Burgundian offensive. These devils will be annihilated once and for all. Curse of the great man to step over the corpses. Doing a little bit of damage. Uh, who are these guys? Cass? That's nice. Let us begin. Should be doing some pretty good damage now. <clears throat> in the initial weeks following the Volkswagen bombing, unity and patriotism took hold of almost every German, no matter which ideology. A former Spearite's reaction is all united against terror or a menace of terrorism. As it seems, the spirit of unity is now flipped to anger. As it has been revealed that Assis Vervel's plans were being known by the Orpel, but through pressure from the hardliner wing of the NSDAP, no actions were taken. Furthermore, some of them even su supplied suspected Vervel's members with money and fake passports. Today, in multiple major German cities, rallies and protests were held. Although rubber bullets and tear gas were used, involvement of Führerspeers prevented authorities from organizing a large-scale crackdown. The demands of the protesters are simple. The rest of Gunter Deckert, the ringleader of the reactionary party wing, a re investigation of suspected terrorist allies and the release of multiple journalists which had re reported on the matter. The movement is rapidly growing as it seems the Red Black Gold Banner, an emblem of a reformist movement throughout recent German history, has become popular similar to them. Already reactionary counter protests are being organized which seem to be led by Decker loyalists. More tension is certain as the movement continues to rally major cities or locations throughout Germany and other cities. Triple times are ahead. Pretty normal. As I finish off our coffee here. Oh, I know. I'm sad now. I, I want to hunt the werewolves. And then we can deal with the protests. Again, a wave of unrest has gripped Germany, caused by many blaming the government for not acting sooner against the Burgundian terrorists and by the harsh martial law. The main corporates are student groups and liberal organizations calling for more reforms. We must decide on how we'll deal with these protests before things spiral out of control, either with a heavy hand or with a velvet glove. Children of the Black Sun. But how's the economy going? That's diplomacy. Ah, I went into a bong, bing bong, and up. That's a lot of surplus. Yannick entered a small town somewhere in rural northern Burgundy. Two days ago, the French unit had liberated the settlement from the SS occupation. His section was last or a set up to deal set up a base of operation for the Wehrmacht, storing equipment and scouting the nearby region for insurgents. He and his friend Theodore had just arrived on the front lines. Inexperienced fresh blood, luckily. The fighting not led to casualties among the villagers, they just had to flee the area and return to their homes just now. Actually, where are we at right with this stuff? Uh something like that. 
Uh, Yannick and Theodore were approached by a group of children. Hello, hello, we made gifts for you. And the children handed over a plastic bag filled with cookies. The language is not an accent, but a strange way of speech, sound, vocabulary, and grammar were the same. It was German, but an extremely common choice of words. Seemingly every Burgundian spoke that way. An artificial German. A correct button, extremely reduced vocabulary, mechanical, and monos. Monos. Yet their native language, used at home and in public. It was surprising to see the Burgunder even had food and, and time to spare to make gifts. Thank you, the Theodore smiled. The children smiled back, giggling, and ran away. Two hours later, Theodore and Yannick had both died from heart failure. Oh, Yannick had shared the cookies with his squad. They too passed away within the next hour. Not only one of them was absent during Yannick's delivery, surviving immediately reported his suspicion. The following day, a warning was issued across the entire Burgundian occupation force. Under no circumstances should gifts from locals, as innocent they may seem, may seem, be accepted. There are no real civilians. Even the children are terrorists. All right, you died. And that's why you ought not eat cookies. Because of terrorism. Terrorist, little, little terrorist cookies. You can't you know, really even see the front line here. Nice. Hey, good job, guys. Can you actually win here? Oh, no. Oh, Link kind of pierces. Are we fighting a river? No? Alright, well. So what happens if we win down here? Oh. Oh, they're all stacked up here. That's not good. Oh, yeah, we can do this stuff too now, huh? Uh, oh. Vosh Vots. Success. Okay. It's been a harrowing few weeks in Germany, but fears and worries that the German people may finally be able to put a rest as German forces are now once again entering the former lands of the Burgund Odenstadt Burgundy. Uh, Germany will, there will be harrowing. We will have to deal with not only the Gudrun Bergwitz SS insurgents, but also unsympathetic locals, logistics, and of course the morale of the German people. We need to do everything in our power to reinforce the Burgundian garrison and avoid an SS takeover at all costs, uh, since it would make another full invasion of Burgundy like the last decade necessary, which would be a crippling blow to our government. Well, domestic terrorism. The nation is in shock. The SS Wehrwolf, a Burgundian terror organization, has struck the very heart of Germany. Thousands are dead or wounded. Fear is spreading across the country. And the people demand revenge. We will give them revenge, and we will bring these monsters to justice. But first, we have to investigate their organization and destroy the structure and find their leader. And eliminate him before even more attacks can take place. Oh, the protest movement, too. Oh, god dang it. Medium escalation. And suicidal stability is okay. Panic will increase. Terrorism activity will decrease. Intel levels is low. Uh, 25 is 30-ish. Expand anti-terror operations, call, calm the populace. Terror intel, yeah, that would be honestly really good to do, probably. Oh, the root. Well, we probably honestly just want to do this stuff. Retrace our funds? Probably. Bureau of Information reports, we won. On the, uh, well, it's, Heil Germania. In the past few years, a new technological revolution has taken over Germany. <clears throat> the Weltnetz, also referred to as Internet in non-European circles, while the Netzeran project is still in our memory, it would be foolish to assume too much similarity between it and the Weltnetz. While the former was an easy means of communication between the universities and research institutes, spearheaded, spearheading Führer Speer senior's campaign for innovation, the, later, the latter developed out of it, with not just much broader usage, but also much more possibilities, now being used for commercial and recreational purposes as well. Every modern computer is able to access the Weltnetz through a decentralized network, effectively enabling it to communicate with every other Veltnet's accessing device on the planet. This allows texts, images, and videos, and much more to be shared instantly. Multiple corporations, experts, and party officials have advocated for a massive expansion of Veltnet's cables across Germany to keep the new wave of uh, digital innovation and economic growth rising. The network is not only a side aspect, but crucial. Expansions of funds for digital infrastructure are strongly advised. However, as fortunate for economy and technological innovation the Veltnet is, we must not be blind to its dangers. This network bears the risk of ideological disinformation campaigns and opens up a vast amount of room for illegal activities such as the spread or spreading of dangerous literature and bypassing of censorship laws for the first time in German history. So of arrests connected to illegal Veltnet's activity occurred in last week, and they will likely not remain the last, and the ORPL needs to be trained and equipped for such risks. Sincerely, Johanna Grun, head of the Bureau of Information, Gerhard Keindel, Gaulet of Germania, we live in interesting times and anti-terror campagne. The horrific attacks on German Germania by the SS Werbluff uh, need a responsible and harsh one. 
It needs a response. We need to up surveillance on unsuspected, unsuspected individuals who hide amongst people. We need to up conscription and put a to patrol the net belt nets to ensure that terrorists and their sympathizers cannot recruit or propagandize on their sites. Every German must know they are either with us or with the terrorists. In the end of the Burgundian War, many lives were lost. Uh, the already impoverished lands of Burgundy lie in ruin. The remote forests of and alpine foothills have been struck by countless waves of bombardment and tired towns raised to the ground by ruthless success. Not a day passed without mourning and public honoring of the fallen Fuhrer Speer. Unlike the rather quick 1996 invasion of Burgundy, this was not a swift or organized takeover, but rather an exhausting war of attrition which the Wehrmacht did not plan for. Really. <clears throat> in the end, Avril was worth it. Good that Himmler finally lies in German ca cha captivity. The last traits of the Schutzstaff was destroyed, and most importantly, the people of Burgundy no longer haunted by the reign of the new Ordenstaff. Many questions are still left, though. For example, the extremely quick resurgence of the SS. The foreign backers are means of funding. Many mistakes have been made in the aftermath of the initial invasion that potential of the Schutzstaffel remnants are underestimated. Eventually, these matters will be dealt with. For now, the people of France, Germany, and Burgundy can rest easy, for the demons of the past have finally been condemned to the heck they came from. Himmler's trail of suffering finally ends. Exterminate the root. Oh. Well, probably don't need to do that one. The Volkshalle avenged. Gunther. Oh. All right. And we'll do the protest as well. Should be a, oh, well, that's in the picture before. Oh, fading Volkshalle aftermath. Over the recent weeks, the initial shock of the Volkshalle bombing is real less present in the public consciousness. Re regular life continues. TV screen time has shifted from analyzing, mourning, and debating the attack to lighthearted entertainment, as they usually did. An unknowing observer might assume that our nation has forgotten the night in which Germania burned, but in reality, it's certain that the hope regarding the beginning of the new millennia, the German people's faith in the future, is no more. So society recovers slowly. Wait, so... Wow, that helped us so much. We still get 0.47 every day, which is actually pretty darn decent. There's a reconstruction of Burgundy. Yoruba land looks some dude. Well, I guess we'll end with... A gentle approach? More reformist. A harsh hand. Promises of reform. It seems like we want to go a gentle approach. A harsh hand! Decker has made a controversial but promising suggestion of a violent crackdown on these protests are racing, or arresting as many of them as possible and authorizing the Orpo to use more aggressive tactics while it greatly anger them, and possibly make them even more radical. We do not need approval from the weak. The actions made by these ungrateful bra brats and terrorist traitors liberals is completely unacceptable, especially in a time when we need to be need calm and stability. We'll not give in to these traitors' demands when it makes us look weak in the eyes of the people. Internationally with our current enemies, this is something that the native nor naive Speer and that Jew lover Schroeder must be realize. Uh, more conservative performance. Where are we at? Ah, oh, screw it. you guys said. Should we do this one? A general approach and promises of reform and the seeds of hope. Or do a harsh hand. No negotiations with traitors and crushed under the boot. Let me know which one we should do. You know, I'll let you choose this one too. Should we do use public paranoia and the axes de buzzin? Or no need to fear and unite against terror. Let me know which way we should go here as well as here. And I guess we'll read Under the Curtains. A terror attack has given insight beyond the surface of the NSDAP. Despite Musnug's attempts, the party is far from united and instead even more divided than before. Deckard's reactionary radicals on one side, Schroeder's revolutionary madness on the other, sadly supported by the senile Fuhrer, and in between the loyalists of the true national solutions have been envisioned by Speer. Not only that, the party bureaucracy and organization have been bloated as an unimaginable amount, with millions of NSDAP members working together in a chaotic and overextended administration. The question is, which factions will the chief of the party, Chancellor, choose to support? And what will, will be the future the NSDAP will be? So let me know what should our future be like. But I think we'll end it there. And I think well, there's only one more episode after this one. Because it's only a demo. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow when we will decide, really decide our future. And have a good old time with everyone else in the world. And if there's anyone else you want, me, you want to see in the year 2000, please let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.